May 1998. Wembley was packed and promotions to the Premiership was at stake. And we were about to witness one of the greatest playoffs the stadium had ever seen. I think the fact that the whole stadium was red and white, that's the first thing that hit me when, when we walked out. I don't think any of the players had ever witnessed anything like that. Honestly, on the pitch that day, it was like 100 degrees. It was absolutely roasting. Charlton got their noses in front in the first half, thanks to Clive Mendonca, who was a Sunderland fan. Clive Mendonca pushes the Premiership door ajar for Charlton. When the half-time whistle blew, things were looking good for Charlton, but they hadn't conceded in their previous nine games. I said, look, if we, if, we, if we don't do anything silly for the first 10 or 15 minutes, I think they go for it a little bit and we can hit them on the break, you know, and counter-attack, and they're playing to our hands a little bit. Within five minutes of the second half, we were 2-1 down. <laughs> Keith Jones. He's aimed for Mendonca, and he's found him. Can he equalise for Charlton? Yes, he can! Three all after 90 minutes, so they went to extra time. And somebody finally hit the jackpot for Sunderland. Mendonca waits in the box. Mendonca! It is the hat trick. And for the third time in this game, Charlton have drawn themselves level. That feeling to score the hat trick was just like, it's just unbelievable, but they were all decent goals, which. Uh, which was nice as well, really. You're never going to see three better goals than what he scored that, that day. So it all came down to a penalty shootout. Corbs comes over and didn't ask, he named, because I wasn't down. I, I took a few for Colchester. I think I took four or five. I missed four or five. I've never scored. And he came over and he said, you're taking one. And I moved on and I stood there and went, oh, no. And I got all the lads coming up. It's up to you, Sash. I'm like, oh, bloody hell, really? You know, you know, no more pressure needed, you know. Obviously, Clive Mendonca was the first to go for Charlton. There's plenty of pictures of me like with the guns out. To be fair, it's the one thing I regret being a Sullivan fan. I shouldn't have done that. But it was just all emotion on the deer and I apologise to the Sullivan fans, I'm sorry for doing that. Then Nicky Summerby leveled things up and in keeping with the spirit of the afternoon, both sides just kept on scoring. I get knocked down, it was three all and it was Mark Kinsella's turn to step up. People say just keep your Keep your idea what you want to do and don't change. And I changed it from left to right, from smashing it and playing it. It was just one of them things that the reaction afterwards was just relief. Just that I wasn't the one that missed. Sasha Illich almost saved Chris Makin's efforts. Now it was four all and effectively sudden death. Next up was Mark Bowen for Cholton. If he missed and Sunderland scored, it was all over. I must say I apologise to all the, all the Charlton fans. I wasn't really thinking about the club. I was thinking I had three young children in the stand and thinking, no, don't, don't miss this penalty, because if you miss this penalty, they're never going to live it down in school the next day. Alex Ray levelled things up at 5-5. Now it was sudden death. The first five penalty takers, you give, you give them to the ref. And then after that, it's down to the players. So I didn't quite know who was going to take it. I knew the first five, but it was up to the players to decide who else was going to take them. You see me start walking, and as I started walking, my legs were going. Like, my legs are gone. Completely, there was nothing left. Something I've got to jog. If I don't jog, it's going to be the longest walk, and my legs are just like jelly anyway. And to be honest, I mean, he, he, if if he went the right way, he could have probably touched a post and come back and saved it. Do you know what I mean, I've gone for a cup of tea or whatever, but it wasn't the most firmly struck in the world. So yeah, I mean, it was. Oh, I'd never, I'm never, and will never be as nervous ever, ever, ever again. And I still think now, I'm still getting nervous watching it. It's crazy. It's like absolutely ridiculous. Noel Quinn put his away, six six. I didn't find out later that Eddie Walsham, the ref, looked round at the remaining players in the, in the centre circle when a, another penalty had to be took. And he looked round and went, come boys, like, someone's got to come and take a penalty. And I, and I heard that Richard Rufus just pushed, pushed Sean out. And if you look at it again, Sean actually jogs all the way to the penalty spot. And I said to Keith before, I've never seen Sean take a penalty ever. Anyway, he scores. Then Michael Gray stepped up 
for Sunderland. I went to Keith, blimey. I mean, how's this going to end? And he went, don't look at this one because it's Michael Gray and it's only the left, it's the first left footer to come up. I went, yeah, he went, yeah, don't look at it. So I didn't. Well, the reason I took the seventh was because I didn't want to take one. Um, me being a local lad, it was the last thing I wanted to do because of the pressure, you know, your family's in the, in the, in the stands, uh, you're a Sunderland supporter at heart and you don't want to be the, the player who lets everybody down. That walk from the centre circle to the penalty spot is the longest and quietest walk I've ever made in my life and probably will be. I saw a 2p coin literally on the, uh, you know, behind the line, I got that, so I'm going to flick it in the air, heads left, tails to right, and that's, that was my only solution. And that's what I did, I flicked the coin, like right, heads, I'm diving to my left. As soon as I took it, I knew I didn't really make the contact that I wanted to make with it, and I seen Sasha Illich diving across the same direction, and I just knew he'd saved it straight away. As soon as Michael kicked the ball, before he even caught the ball, I had this huge grin on my face, I knew I was going to obviously save it. Well, I wish he had a double-headed coin. <laughs> he might have done it the wrong way. Illich has saved it! Charlton are in the Premiership! I see, you know, all the lads literally running towards me. I'm like, all right, OK, if I don't stop right now, I will be stampeded. So I literally just dived on the floor and all, all the lads were just jumping on top of me. I remember all the players running to Sasha. And if, if I wish you could see that footage because I just sat there. I was physically and mentally drained. God, yeah. I didn't even celebrate. I was absolutely wrecked. Uh, just the thoughts that what I'd done against Sunderland, uh, scoring a hat-trick against my team I love, it was just raining, but it was a great, great feeling. I think I ended up walking out with a, with a cup, and then I woke up the next day, thought I lost it. <laughs> the managers phoned me up afterwards, saying, you know, it was one of the best games I've ever seen. Build up to the game, I was rooming with Clive. Clive was more worried about finding 20 tickets for his family, because they'd come down from Sunderland, and uh, he hadn't got, they hadn't got the tickets yet. And he was floating around the, the hotel all morning, worried about that. And you're thinking his head's not in the game. And he goes and scores a hat-trick. After the playoff final, uh, me and my wife went away, we went iron up her. Anyway, we were having a night out, and uh, I've gone to the toilet, like, and uh, just as I was going out, I was opened the door, face to face with Mickey Gray. <laughs> Mickey's just looked at us and went, the last person I want to see is you, like. Yeah, I spent a long time at my football club, 12 and a half years, and I didn't want that to be the only thing that people talk about, which it probably is, but, um, I wanted to prove to everybody that I was good enough to play on a regular basis in a club that were going places. And that's exactly what we were doing. We were going places. In a strange kind of way, that game was the making of both sides. Charlton only lasted one season in the top flight, but bounced straight back to enjoy their most successful period in the Premier League ever. While Sunderland won the First Division Championship the following season, and then finished seventh in the Premiership, two seasons running. We had that belief, unbelievably, that the next year we would win it. And I just still maintain, whilst it wasn't a particularly great thing that happened, it was a pivotal moment in us coming together as a team and a club and a city. A few weeks ago, Charlton's Community Trust brought most of their team together. A chance for them to reminisce about a playoff final, the likes of which we will probably never see again. <laughs>